Welcome to Electron Online. Well, here's another challenging problem from the JE Advanced Test on Physics dealing with thermodynamics and specifically calorimetry. Now let's read the problem together. It says a liquid at 30 degrees centigrade is poured very slowly into a calorimeter that is at a temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. The boiling temperature of the liquid is 80 degrees centigrade. And Celsius and centigrade, of course, is the same. It is found that the first 5 grams of the liquid as you're pouring completely evaporates. After pouring another 80 grams of the liquid, the equilibrium temperature is found to be 50 degrees Celsius. The ratio of the latent heat of vaporization to its specific heat is... And we have to... Well, wait a minute. It's a ratio, isn't it? I don't know why we need degree centigrade there, but we'll find out if that's needed or not. So I have a little picture, there's a calorimeter, we're pouring some liquid in there, and two things happen. The first five grams evaporate, after that, the next 80 grams causes everything to be in an equilibrium temperature of 50 degrees centigrade, which means there's two parts to this. Uh, let's, no, let's start with part one here, and let's put part two over here. So there's two things we have to look at separately. The first part is we pour 5 grams of the liquid into the calorimeter and that evaporates. So here we can say that heat gained by the liquid is equal to the heat lost by the calorimeter. So the heat gained by the liquid, well first of all the liquid starts at 30 degrees and rises up to 80 degrees before it begins to boil. So we have mc of the liquid delta t plus mass times the latent heat of vaporization equals the heat loss by the calorimeter which would be mc delta t. Now notice we don't know the mass of the calorimeter and we don't know the specific heat of the calorimeter. They're both unknown. So somehow we need to be able to eliminate that. And we're going to need the ratio of the latent heat of vaporization to its specific heat. So right here what we want is to want the latent heat of vaporization divided by the specific heat of the liquid is equal to. That's ultimately what we're trying to find. Okay, let's plug in what we know and see where we can get to. So the mass is 5 grams, C of the liquid is unknown, the delta T, well we go from 30 to 80, so it would be 50, plus the mass, 5, times the latent heat of vaporization, notice those are the two unknowns, is equal to mc times delta t. Now the temperature there goes from 110 down to 80, that's a minus 30 degrees, but the way we write it here, heat gain equals heat lost, both sides of it must be positive, so that's a positive 30 degrees. We take the absolute value of the change. Cleaning that up a little bit, we get 250 C, specific heat of the liquid, plus 5 times the latent heat of vaporization equals MC times 30. All right, that's as far as we can go with the first part of the problem. Now the whole thing is at 80 degrees Celsius or centigrade. Now we pour 80 grams of additional liquid into the system. So now again we have heat gained by the liquid is equal to heat loss by the calorimeter. Now notice that the first 5 grams that were poured in evaporated, so there's still no liquid at this point, only calorimeter at 80 degrees centigrade. So heat gain is going to be mc delta t, now this is c of the liquid, equals mc delta t of the calorimeter. Again, this must be positive and this must be positive because the way we set up the equation. The mass is now 80. C is what we are trying to find. Delta T will go from 30 degrees, the initial temperature of the liquid was a 30, and it goes up to final heat, 50, right? Because that's the final situation, it's at 50, so that's 20, is equal to MC, again, we don't know what that is, times delta T of the calorimeter. Notice the delta T of the calorimeter goes from 80 down to 50, that's a 30 degree change, we want that to be a positive value, so positive 30. Now, multiplying this out, we get 1600 CL equals 30 MC. Now notice that 
This is what we got from the first equation, uh, second equation. This is what we got from the second equation. Notice on the right side, we have mc times 30. We have mc times 30. Those are equal to each other. So we can plug this into the right side of that equation to get rid of the mc of the calorim calorimeter. So now we have 250 Cl plus five times the latent heat of vaporization equals 1600 Cl. Moving this over to that side, we have 5LV is equal to 1600 minus 250, that would be 1350 CL. Or finally, we could say that um, LV divided by CL, so we have LV divided by CL is equal to 1350 divided by 5, which is uh, 270. So we can see that the ratio between the latent heat of vaporization and the specific heat of the liquid is 270, so that's the answer that goes in here. The ratio is 270. Now what about the degree centigrade? Latent heat of vaporization is, uh, let's see here, that would be um, M times L and uh, ML, latent heat of vaporization, that would be calories per gram, because we end up in calories, that's calories per gram, so that would be calories per gram divided by C sub L, that would be um, calories per gram per delta C, so calories per gram times delta T, I should say, and sure, that's why we need, del that would need degree centigrade. I was wondering why there was a degree centigrade there, but that's because the ratio does end up with degree centigrade, because L sub V and C sub L do not have the same units. Ah, so anyway, the number is 270, which ends up being the right answer. So this is something, can you crank this out in three minutes? Maybe if you understood the question exactly correctly. It turns out when I first read the equation, I was a little bit confused about what they meant by another 80 grams were poured into the calorimeter. Um, I wasn't sure that we first had five grams which evaporated, and then an additional 80 grams were poured in for a total of 85 grams. Maybe if they had set for a total of 85 grams, that would have triggered things a little bit more. I was at first confused about understanding the question. I probably took at least three minutes just to understand the question. I would have run out of time to get the rest of it done. But anyway, that is how you do this problem. And it's, again, a very challenging and interesting problem. That's it for today. All right. Thank you, darling.